Hello, I am coming to you from inside the internet. Yes, this is really what it looks like. I'm just kidding. I'm sitting here right at my desk. But let's talk about that 3D effect. All right, it's a day later because sometimes it is hard to do things. So a little while ago, I made a video pretty much saying, hey, the Fusion page is really cool. If you're in DaVinci Resolve, you should check it out. And in that video, I played a little reel of some of the things that I thought were cool that I made completely in Fusion. Now, most of the things I showed off in that micro reel were from projects I had done on my YouTube channel, from tutorials I had already made. But there was one section that wasn't from something I had done for YouTube. It was from a standalone project that I did for the agency I was working with. And that's this section right here. Now, there is quite a lot going on in that section. I touched on uh, several really cool techniques that I would love to get around to eventually, uh, but I've had several people specifically ask about the general effect of that 3D look. It really sort of gets around like you're inside a computer, which was our goal for this project. So that's what this video is going to be about. And off the bat, I need to say one reason that, that clip looks really good is that I was working with a professional designer who made me all of these assets and I was able to take and animate and work with. And I'm really happy with how the entire project came out because of that mostly. But today we're gonna to talk about how to achieve that simple 3D look. We're gonna to touch on a whole lot of 3D fundamentals and, and some other things you should know if you wanna dive in here. Good? Good. So we're gonna start here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. I've created a, a new timeline, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames a second. And in the effects library up here, I'm gonna come down to effects and grab a fusion composition, drag that right down and stretch it out a little bit. And before we jump into the fusion page, I'm actually just gonna grab a little folder of media I have out here with just a couple OBS recordings from a few different games. And then with my playhead over this fusion composition, I'm going to click this button to open the fusion page. Now, like like always, when you open a blank fusion composition, all you have is this media out node. If you bring in a piece of media or a clip or a video or a photo, you will have a media in representing that as well. And then what we are going to do is we are going to open our media pool, come to that games folder, and I'm just gonna grab all four of these clips and drag them into my node viewer. And you will see automatically what that does is it creates four media in nodes, and by default, because I had them all selected, it created merges to bring them all together, but we're actually gonna select all those merges and get rid of them. And you can preview any of these by clicking one or two, pulling them up in the first or second viewer. And let's talk about some basics of working with footage like this in the Fusion page. By default, you don't have a timeline, but what you can do is select any of these media ins, go to the inspector, and here you have your global in and out and your trim. So if I pull up this halo footage, at the beginning we have this long loading screen, right? But if I want it to start right at gameplay, I can go towards the beginning of my timeline. And if I pull up this trim, it is trimming or cutting off the beginning of this clip. So if I trim that enough, it starts at the uh, 1400th frame of the file at the beginning of our timeline. You see now we're running around it's a great old time. And here, right off the bat, we are going to get to uh, the tool that really makes this look and makes so much of 3D inside Resolve possible, and that is the Image Plane 3D tool. Watch this. I'm gonna come to this Halo clip, and I'm gonna click this button in the default toolbar here, Image Plane 3D. Now we'll take that media and connect it to the image plane 3D. And now if I preview that in viewer two, you'll see that now we are in a completely 3D workspace. And to touch on some basics of movement here, if you hold left click and middle mouse button, that will zoom in and out. Middle click and right mouse button, and that will pivot around whatever you're looking at. And a holding middle mouse button is your general uh, pan around. So you'll see here, what, what that did is it took that media and it took that video clip and just pasted it on a 3D plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that image plane, which is still has all the default settings, and paste that onto each of these other media in nodes as well. 
and we can preview these, cycle through all of these different 3D planes. And now we are going to click this button up here to create a merge 3D node. That'll create it floating out here. And a big difference between a merge 3D node and a normal merge node when you're working in 2D is that in 2D, a merge node just has a background layer and a foreground layer. And you can control how those interact in the settings. But in merge 3D, each instance of a merge 3D node is its own complete 3D workspace. And you can plug in to that workspace as many 3D objects as you want. So we can come to the little gray square on all of these image planes and pipe those right into our merge 3D tool. And now if we preview that merge 3D, uh, you are only seeing one at first, but remember all these image planes have the same settings. So right now, all four of these layers are taking up the exact same 3D space. So what you can start to do is select this first 3D plane, use these on-screen transform controls, hey, slide that right up over, and then now you are getting into some cool stuff. Image it there. And then now you've got this pretty cool layout. If you wanted to showcase uh, all the games you play or all the games your system can play or something, this looks pretty cool, but there are still some things that you will need in every 3D scene you make. The first, if you have this Merge 3D selected, we're gonna click this button up here. Looks like a little camera, and that is to create a camera. And with that Merge 3D selected, if we pivot around, you'll see, hey, now we have this really cool visualization of a camera. And we're gonna leave this for now and go back to our Merge and click this button to make a Renderer 3D node. Now this is essential because it is the end of the 3D chain. Whatever you do in the 3D space, you need to get back to a 2D video. And that is what this renderer does. It renders out your 3D scene back to 2D. And in this example, using the 3D camera that we just made. So if if we preview that renderer 3D, you don't see anything. So let's preview that merge on viewer one, where you see your whole 3D screen, and you'll see, you don't see anything coming out of the renderer because the camera is still poking through this 3D layer and looking back out into the middle of nowhere. But this camera has some position controls as well. Again, make sure you are clicking on the camera node and then we can pull that back in 3D space and then now you see coming out of the render, you see this whole little scene. And with that camera selected in the inspector, you have some custom controls. One thing I like to do almost every time is come down to this focal length in millimeter. This is how wide or how zoomed in the lens on the camera in the scene is using. So most of the time I like to widen that up a little bit. Let me go to like 18 and that'll let me actually push in closer while still seeing more of the image, which is really important when you wanna get some like uh, uh, natural like lens warping or distortion or just to get that sense that you aren't looking at, at something flat. And that really starts to come into play if we get a little bit closer. Uh, we have been using these default axis transforms, but if we come up here in our viewer, you have this little rotate option. If you click that, now you have this completely different set of controls right around the camera. And these are to rotate on each of these individual axes. So now if you hold the green, you'll rotate that way. Red, maybe rotate up a bit. And then now if you go back to these transforms, you can really push this in and get a cool little look. And you can see all of this reflected in the Renderer 3D well. If I just come up on this Y axis, you have this really cool move. So let's actually keyframe that move. I'm gonna bring my camera as low as I want it, come to the beginning of my timeline, go to my camera, transform it over here in the inspector, put a keyframe on this Y translation option, come to the end of our timeline, and you can either manually change this in the inspector or just change it with the tactile controls in your viewer. So now I'm gonna pull this Y up. You'll see that reflected in the renderer, come all the way up. And now over the course of our timeline, you're gonna get this move up on the Y axis. And it'll be pretty cool. This is the basics of this effect, but there are so many things you can do on top of this to make it look uh, much cooler. <laughs> So let's do some of those. So first, I'm gonna take this camera movement. I'm actually gonna clear out this animation by right clicking on that value, go to remove all from translation group. And I'm actually gonna make this camera 
uh, a little more extreme. I'm pushing it much closer to this image and I'm also going to take this rotation so it's at much more of an angle. So we're gonna do a similar move. I'm gonna bring it back down, go to the beginning of our timeline, keyframe, end of our timeline, and bring that right up. And you'll see that this close image is much closer to the camera. And I'm even gonna keyframe that rotation a little bit. That will be rotating on the Y axis as well. So again, beginning of the timeline, rotation on the Y, keyframe, end of the timeline. Uh, pull that over just a little bit there. And if we scrub, you'll see it slides up and, and tilts a little towards these uh, clips that are playing. Cool. Now, don't forget, we have this Renderer 3D, which is the end of our node tree now, but we need to connect that to the media out to get it back to the edit page. And more importantly, to get it back into just a general 2D workspace. Now, watch this. On the Renderer 3D, I'm gonna come down to Output Channels, and I'm going to click Z. And what that is going to do is it is going to include the depth information, the Z space information in the signal that is coming out of this render 3D node. And we can do that to do some uh, really simple but great looking depth of field effects. So I'm going to pull up my tool search bar by clicking shift space. That brings this up and I'm going to type in depth and I'm gonna take this depth blur. I'm gonna click add it'll add it into this signal chain. And if I preview that, it shouldn't be too egregious off the bat, especially because we are really close to the camera here, but we are going to uh, tweak some of these settings. The first thing I'm going to do is pull down the Z scale towards something pretty small. Let's try uh, somewhere five to 10. Let's try seven. Oh, I did recently find out about this technique from a great video from uh, Jake Webb, who's doing a ton in the Resolve community as a whole. Uh, he runs the general uh, DaVinci Resolve Discord where a bunch of people have come together. It's super cool. A link to his video will be in the description um, because I was doing this a much less efficient way before I found his video. But we brought down that Z scale. I'm gonna pull up the blur size and you're starting to see a little bit of what it's doing. But now the coolest part of this effect, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my timeline and there you can really see it's out of focus there. But I'm going to hold this sample button, come over my image and you'll see instantly a little change and I'm just going to point to what I want to be in focus. This is super cool. So then I will release there and now that portion of the screen will be in focus. And you see on this edge, as it starts to get away from that point, it gets a little blurry. And, and that Z scale especially, if, if you lower that just a few points, it really ramps up. Uh, the rate at which things get blurry. But at the beginning of the timeline where we uh, just sampled that, you do need to set that keyframe on focal point. And then at the end of our timeline, where remember we've set all these other keyframes, we're gonna do that same thing, but point to something on this new clip that we want to be. Again, I just showed something in the center. And then now, over the course of the clip, the focus actually shifts from that bottom layer to the top layer. It's pretty subtle. You'll have to tweak your individual settings to find something that works exactly for you. I pulled down Z scale just a little bit, pulled up blur a little bit as well. And just to preview this, I'm actually gonna hop back to the edit page where I'm gonna let my fusion cache just render this out. All right, we cached a little bit and I did go down and pull down that Z scale as well, but now you'll see we have this move and the focus shifts slowly towards the camera and then it ends up at this great place looking at this last video clip right in the center of the frame. And it looks really cool. Now, a little word of warning when you're using this uh, method for depth of field, that, that blur. Um, it works great with hard edges. Um, I had to shift around the intro to this video because especially when you have uh, layers that contain blur, um, it doesn't know how to read that in Z space and a blur, especially when things are overlapping. I had a background grid at one time in front of all those assets and it was showing particular areas of the background grid uh, in focus with layers above it. Didn't work great, hard edges will be your friend. But just to add one little more layer of flare, let's go ahead and add a grid to this one. It should work great. I'm going to create a solid. I'm actually gonna pull down this alpha so it is see-through here. I'm going to create a grid coming into that. 
and we'll, we'll just use this generic one for now and in that I'm going to come into an image plane and if you preview it, you see nothing, oh no. And that is because specifically with how these effects are working, you need to come into the image plane and come down to visibility and uncheck suppress aux channels for transparent pixels. Hey, now we've got a grid. We can plug that into our merge 3D node and the grid is remember in that default location. So let's grab that image plane, push it back in 3D space a bit and in that transform for that image plane, I'm going to pull up this scale and because we are at this severe angle, let's go ahead and slide it over a little bit and we are at pretty extreme. Yeah, let's get interesting. Let's let's pull the scale up to about 10 as well. And you'll see, you'll get slivers of it close to in focus with when the focus plane interacts with this. Let's change over the course of this. Yeah, so, so it is, is, is looking along that axis. But as you turn and focus comes towards the camera, that background will come out of focus again. And again, this is working well with this 3D method uh, because we are working with the, the sharp edges of this frame. Pretty cool. You know what? Let's come into that grid before the image plane. Let's add a little soft glow. And I'm just gonna uncheck the red channel here so we get this little blue glow. Maybe pull down the gain on that a little bit. Maybe, yeah, glow up the size. And now it feels a little more technical, a little more cool. You could have any number of, of changes you want to this and it'll look pretty cool. So let's preview this and see what our final effect looks like. And hey, just for fun, going into that soft glow, I created a fast noise node to serve as a mask. Let's see if we can see if that actually does anything. All right, and we're back and let's preview. And it looks pretty cool. You can see sort of that pulsing on the background too. That looks pretty rad. And the shift in focus looks great. I kind of think this looks better than the intro I made. <laughs> but this is super cool. This could be an amazing starting soon screen on a stream or a be right back screen. You could show off clips. There is so much potential here and it's pretty easy to set up. And bonus, it teaches you the basics of working in 3D in the Fusion page in Resolve, which can lead you to a whole lot of other super cool stuff. Uh, if you want more info on working in 3D, I have a few different videos that I've on that doing some pretty cool stuff check that out and like i said i only made this video because of the feedback i have received on previous videos so if you have any ideas for any specific effects you would like please leave a comment below i also stream occasionally right now so uh, subscribe if you want to hop into one of those live streams and be notified about those thanks i'll see you next time